Master Match can change every color to any other color. You can use the software for a wide range of outcomes like matching one camera to another or making your camera output look like other cameras you don't own. You can also neutralize colors for product photography, extract looks from before and after screenshots, and even match colors of different cameras without a color chart. The core of the software is our master match algorithm, which calculates all unknown colors in a novel 3D interpolation process. The algorithm works theoretically with a single known color pair and becomes much more accurate with additional color values. For some popular cameras and color charts, we have provided templates in the software, but the software will work with any color chart available worldwide, even if you invent and print one yourself. No matter how you adjust your colors, at the end, you can export a 3D lookup table or an ICC profile and use it in any program with LUT or ICC profile support. Enough information. Now I will show you how to actually use MasterMatch. The software has three modes, the color chart mode, the free point mode, and the pixel difference mode. Let's start with the color chart matching. First, you need a reference image, which you load here on the left via the plus icon. Then you need an image you want to match, which you load next to it. If you're using the software for the first time and working with your own reference image, you must first create a grid for a color chart. This is of course easier if you first position the frames over the color charts in both images. Next, go to Create Modify via Set Colors. With the neutral eyedropper, you pick the neutral color values on your reference chart. With the other eyedropper, you pick the colored ones. You can delete points that you have created by mistake if you have the trash can active. Also, you can delete all points with the round arrow, but we don't want to do that right now. With the eye here, you can show and hide the grid. With the radius slider, you can adjust the size of the points in relation to the grid. I'll explain the other two controls in a moment in the context of free point matching, because you'll certainly use them more often in this mode. If you want to use this color grid more than once, save it via the disk button. By clicking again on set colors, you leave the functions for creating color charts and your save chart appears in the set colors menu. This way, you can quickly switch between saved color charts and delete color charts that are no longer needed by clicking on the trash can. Via the eye symbol, you can deactivate and reactivate the color change. At the top, you can switch back and forth between the reference image and the image to be adjusted. Under Preview, you can load any image on which you want to evaluate the color change. You can also judge the color change in the LUT visualization. I will come to this in more detail later. If you want to save the created color grid, which you have already saved here above, in combination with the reference image and the included colors as a template, simply click Save as a template via the plus icon. This is very helpful for matching future footage to the same colors. When you load a template, a preview image is displayed under Reference so that you know which image the colors come from. The color grid with the exact saved colors you selected then displays over the image to be matched and can be easily aligned. Each saved template contains a reference preview image, the individual color grid and the exact saved colors. This way, you always have your favorite colors at your fingertips. Next, I would like to explain the other options for color matching. The entire color handling is divided into two sections. One to match low contrast log footage to a basic level of contrast and saturation, and one section to do the precise color matching. The target matching section always works on the basis of what comes out after the log conversion. If you leave it neutral, the overall color matching is done based on the loaded image. At the end of your process, you can then save a LUT or an ICC profile for 1. Log conversion only, 
two, color matching only, or three, for both. If you don't need the LUT conversion LUT separately, using this section makes no sense in most cases, and you can simply hide it. An exception to this would be if you use the two sliders to remove brightness or increase the color shift during the transformation. Making these brightness and color shift adjustments is more common in free point matching mode, which I will explain later in this tutorial. You remember that when you created the grid for the color chart, you defined which colors in your color chart are neutral using the eyedropper tool. These boxes are also symbolized by a dotted frame, while the saturated colors have a solid frame. The first block refers specifically to these neutral colors. All the neutral colors in the image lined up create a gray axis. By activating the first check mark, the gray axis of the image to be matched is adjusted to the gray axis of the reference image. All other R, G and B values are adjusted according to this change. This results in a basic adjustment of the image. Often, a reference image does not have 100% black and white in the image. These values can be added to the gray axis in this next option, but it is not required. With or without 100% black and white, we now have more or less adjusted the white balance of one image to match the other, though keep in mind that the color values of your reference image may not be 100% neutral. If you intentionally want to replicate the slightly non-neutral color look of another camera, you can leave out the next option. However, since we want to achieve accurate neutrals, let's select the next option to perform a white balance on all neutral colors in the reference image, which will neutralize them 100%. A small pro tip on the side. The master match algorithm that comes afterwards can slightly recolor neutral tones that are located between the selected neutral points if colored reference points nearby cause a strong color shift. However, if you select Protect Neutrals in the master match part afterwards, all color values that are neutral after the gray axis correction will be kept neutral until the final result including those that are in between the defined neutral points after the white balance. This allows the saturated colors to adapt the look of a specific camera, while the neutral values are perfectly neutralized. With the Harmonize Saturation function, you bring the saturation values of the image to a similar level as those in the reference image. I strongly recommend using this function if you use log footage. It leads to better results with the Master Match algorithm. Now we come to the core of the software. The master match algorithm exactly matches the output colors to the reference colors and calculates the unknown color values by a clever 3D interpolation. This allows you to apply the color correction to any image or video afterwards. As with the gray axis, you can artificially add 0 and 255 to the image if necessary. If you are uncertain which settings are the best, it is always a good idea to take a look at the LUT visualization, which I will return to in a moment. Also remember to read the tooltips for different options until you're familiar with the software. Next, I'll explain the free point matching mode because it's quite similar to color chart matching with some additional flexibility. If you're working with a reduced contrast log image, I recommend that you first bring it to a normal contrast and saturation level. You will see the reason for this in a moment when we talk about the two sliders in the Create Modify section. So, first we adjust the black and white point so that the histogram values don't go into clipping and then correct a little brightness and saturation thus giving us a good starting point. In free point mode, you can get really creative. You can adapt a look by defining individual points or even match two cameras if you don't have a color chart at hand. You do all this by selecting reference colors in the reference image and assigning them to corresponding colors in the image to be matched. The more matching color pairs you pick, the more accurate the color matching becomes. Keep in mind that when adapting a nice look Two or three color pairs are often enough. Here I take a value in the sky and one in the medium brightness range, plus a skin tone because skin tones always play a role in the look. As you can see, the results are quite poor. But don't worry, 
we'll take care of that now. This is where the two sliders I mentioned come into play. If I move the point around a bit in the image so that the point to be matched has different brightness than the reference selection, the contrast ratio will be broken. That's why the lower slider gives you the possibility to remove the brightness change from the transformation. In this way, only the color is transferred to the point. Theoretically, you can also increase the brightness change, but this makes little sense in most cases. It makes much more sense with a color transformation if you, say, want to apply more of the color look than the extract difference between the images. Now that you know how to use these two sliders to remove or enhance both the brightness change and the color change from the transform, I'll briefly show you why it's important to do a log conversion first. The reason is that the sliders add the original values from the image to be matched after the log conversion. If you add a very pale log value from the low contrast footage, the result will not look the way you want it to. Be prepared to experiment. Free point matching is very powerful and once you get a feel for how best to set the points, you will get amazing results very quickly. Last but not least, we come to the pixel difference mode. In this mode, the software expects a congruent image pair, one with a look and one without. That's why you see a warning message right up here, because the two images that are loaded are not exactly the same size. So I load two images of the same size. This mode is great, because you can find a before-after image comparison somewhere, screenshot them, extract the look and apply it to all your images in video. Your newly inspired look is ready to go when you load the paired images and save a lookup table. There are three additional things I would like to explain about pixel difference mode that are important. The first is the cropping frame. If you have any elements such as text in the image that you don't want to be included in the color calculation, you can use the red frame to crop the image so that all things that you don't want to be included in the calculation are outside the frame. Second, if you have a before-after image where the before image is a low contrast log image and the after image is the final graded result, no problem. You can extract the color change from a normal color space to the look by performing a log conversion first. Then you can save the log conversion and the look afterwards both separately or as the total transformation. Third and last, the two images you load may not be perfectly congruent. This can happen if you're dealing with frame grabs from videos or if perspective corrections, local adjustments or image-based effects like microcontrasts have been applied between before and after. The best way to monitor this is to go to the LUT visualization. If you see blocky transitions like these here and here, you can counteract them with the LUT smoother. Yes. The look may be slightly less accurate, but I strongly recommend you pay attention to this function to prevent any artifacts in your final output. If the differences in the image are minimal, this works quite well. If, for example, in a video the subject has already moved between before and after, I would instead work in free point matching mode, because pixel difference mode maps each pixel in the reference image to the corresponding pixel in the image to be matched Significant differences between the two images results in misinformation that can corrupt the look and bring in artifacts. So, now you know how to get your colors and looks perfectly under control. At the end of each process, simply export the corresponding LUT or ICC profile. The log conversion LUT contains only the changes of this section. The color matching LUT contains the changes between the image after the log conversion and the final result. The combined LUT contains all changes between the loaded reference image and the one to be matched. If you do not make any adjustments in the log conversion section, the color matching LUT 
and the combined LUT will of course produce the same result. To learn how to use LUTs in Premiere, After Effects, Final Cut Pro X, Photoshop and DaVinci Resolve, see our tutorials at pic-in.de slash mastermatch tutorials. To use the looks in Capture One on Mac, simply copy the ICC profile into the Color Profiles folder of the operating system. This is library slash color sync slash profiles. On Windows, you can simply right-click to install it. If you want to work with profiles in Lightroom, go to the Preset section in Adobe Camera Raw and Alt-click on the icon to create a new preset. Then, under Color Lookup Table, select the .cube file you exported from MasterMatch. Under the name you gave here above, you will find your profile in Lightroom with the color changes from MasterMatch. Have fun working with MasterMatch.